Hello, and welcome to Gamer Premonitions, the 2020s. We have gathered yet again to tell you what will be coming in the future of gaming, and this time, we are broadening the scope to all of the next decade. In order to accomplish such a vast task, we have brought in an additional guest. We have Dr. Agro. Welcome to the show, Dr. Agro. Uh, it's, uh, good to be here? We also have KZ from KZExcellent.com. The future is now. Mr. Feel from Mr. Feel's Wild Ride. Future's so bright you don't need eyes to see it. And Bob. Hey, everybody. From Gigaboots. So what we're going to do is we're each going to come in like usual with four premonitions telling you all about this thing that has yet to be but will become. Our gamer fortune tellers are here to predict all of these things for you. And we have so much to cover, so we should get started. But before we can talk about what's coming for gaming in 2020, Mr. Feel, what is the 2020s? The 2020s is the decade of 2020 to 2030, or the decade of 2021 to 2031, if you're an annoying pedant. In this <laughs> decade, everyone will realize we truly are in a cyberpunk future, it just sucks and only has the bad parts and there's no leather jackets or neon lit katana. So Dan, are you excited for the 2020s? I am so excited, Mr. Feel. <laughs> the 2020s are going to suck. I'm so excited for them. <laughs> Feel, thank you very much for making that decade pedant joke because God damn it, I'm a pedant and those people are wrong and can suck my dick. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Dr. Agro, being a pedant... A pendant? You can go first. Open the floor with your first amazing gamer premonition for the 2020s. Okay. Well, uh, upon having opened my mind to the swirling maelstrom of infinite possibility, I have divined from the auguries that Microsoft will, within the next decade, mm -hmm. completely bow out of console hardware manufacturing but never actually admit it in any of their PR. <laughs> Son of a bitch, let me cross this off. <laughs> they, are, they are going to Did he pivot. get it exactly? Did you have the last part feel? Uh, no, I had more detail. You want me to just read my So do quick? I. <laughs> they are going to pivot to, uh, like, the Xbox Inside branding certification for third-party <laughs> oh PC hardware manufacturers. <laughs> Um, uh, oh, in an attempt to fill the perceived market gap, Netflix will attempt to buy rebrand and relaunch Stadia. <laughs> Wait, this, this, this is like all, two premonitions. This what? is all one premonition. It's an interconnected system. Oh, that's, that's fair. That's fair. It's a... Okay, I get it. Domino effect. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's the the wheel of fate effect. is turning. The wheel of fate is turning. <laughs> Agro is Ashton Kutcher. Okay. Well, that's a pretty good startup to this Gamer Premonitions. I have my own to follow up with. In the future, by the end of this decade, all racing games are held up to the lofty standards of FromSoft's seminal classic, Born with an E, to ride. In a genre <laughs> first, not only can you adjust your cambers to allow for the body to roll, but you can also adjust them to dodge roll. <laughs> This is terrible. Oh, this is fantastic. <laughs> I, got, I got hit by a weapon on the last trap, last lap. Oh, I, I hate this because this is one of the times where Dan forges a weapon that I don't understand. <laughs> Sometimes you turn that last corner and a car comes out of nowhere and hits you and you just need to keep in mind on your third lap that guy's always going to be there. Oh, that makes sense. Yes. Why aren't recent games designed like that already? Uh, you're going to be saying that a lot once Born with an E to Ride comes out in the 2020s. Is there a lot of blood in this game? Uh, that's, that's DLC. Oh, okay. Yeah. Did Sony pay FromSoft to make a Days Gone racing game? <laughs> Could you imagine? That is this very specific circle of hell you fucking imagined there. <sighs> okay. These, these are very powerful premonitions, Casey. I'm going to need you to follow up. What can you tell us about the 2020s? All right, so we've had 
an excellent past decade, but at the end of it, we obtained Stadia, the early launched wonderful gaming platform, and it has had a problematic start. <laughs> it's trying it's trying its best to find uh, some footing, and Google's like, what are we going to do? So their, their only solution, besides killing it, is to buy an entire video game development studio. <laughs> so I've decided, what, what could they pick? And I'm like, they, they're like, we need to get the hardcore players in there. And because they know that Dark Souls is so popular, they just buy Namco Bandai. <laughs> they they know that because, they don't because, own FromSoft, because they could have right? bought from software <laughs> but because dark souls is owned by namco bandai they're like that's what we do right and they're like why are we getting all these dragon ball games <laughs> so so google's just gonna drop 10 billion dollars on Bandai namco that means that and hey think of it this way in the 2020s eventually all bad anime arena fighters will be sealed on stadia Unless every single <laughs> franchise holder dumps them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> everyone would. As soon as they could get well, out of the contract, I have be done. I've, <laughs> well, un well, unfortunately, I have not prepared a domino effect part of my premonition it's, of when it's okay. Bamco loses all of their license and now Activision makes Dragon Ball games. It's okay, Casey. You know why? Because that's happening in the 2030s. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Oh, man. This is great. Google owns Namco Bandai. Uh, we got a FromSoft racing game I, and Xbox. I'm going to be honest. I was so afraid of mine. I'm like, this is the dumbest premonition I've ever had. And I had the PS4 with 45 SKUs with colors. <laughs> LED colors. The big V. Uh, yes. Mr. Feel, I'm going to need you to follow up the powerful energy of these first three premonitions. Tell me. What is happening in the 2020s for gamers? Well, I'm going to directly challenge aggro. <gasps> yes, come to me. Dun, dun. <laughs> in the 2020s, Microsoft will release a new version of the Xbox every two years until they exit the console market entirely in 2027. They will be priced similarly to phones. The only even remotely feasible way to afford them will be via contract plans, Several retailers will stop carrying the Xbox consoles because they do not want to deal with Microsoft's bullshit contracts and nobody is buying them otherwise. This seems incredibly likely. So in 2022, they'll release the Xbox Series T and then 2024, they'll release the Xbox Series Q and in 2026, they'll release whatever other bullshit. And it'll cost fifteen hundred dollars. I hate this one the most because it because it may happen. Yeah, no, this is. I depressing. hate this one the most because mm -hmm. it just seems like our future anyway. Yes. Yeah. No, I agree. That's it's, it's all too about real. editing podcasts about this and getting upset. Our cyberpunk future is lame. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bob. Our cyberpunk future has no games. <laughs> 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 If you buy the if you buy the Xbox <laughs> neural augment, uh, you what? can play these games from the Xbox One. <laughs> Great. I'm buying a gun, uh, Bob. Um, these. What's up? Do you I, have something to stack? No, I don't okay. have anything to stack on that. Okay, I was <laughs> going to say, let that resolve and then hold priority. <laughs> thank you, uh, Bob. Given these premonitions, we took a real downward trend at the end there. Uh, do you have anything to amaze me? positive or negative to bring back some energy i have what might be oh. the most ludicrous unbelievable one tonight oh no what people will realize that bethesda makes bad video games <laughs> <laughs> oh no that's impossible todd howard Maybe. has the spell on the game industry we have Could we have people like break through his red, sleeping spell cd project red's making real open world games mm -hmm. other people are getting into it yeah. They might just look like a joke within this decade. It might happen. That is true. That seems like the most likely one, even even more than feels, because I <laughs> we may be on the cusp. That's true. We could just make a turn in, like, with these next-gen consoles, the PS5 and Xbox Series X, 
being so powerful, those games still not running well and having major glitches will be less forgivable. Yeah, when right? they released Elder Scrolls 6 Skyrim 2. Yeah, like, <laughs> can I can I add some optimism on, onto this foretelling? Oh, sure, yeah. Maybe right. among the people who realize Bethesda games are kind of bad uh-huh. will be Bethesda. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Oh, no, that, that is impossible. <laughs> I think Agro has the most outlandish. <laughs> <laughs> this is to go even further beyond. <laughs> That's our crazy act. Well, we'll find out this year because they're probably shipping Starfield as a launch title. Oh, no, you can't. I no. can't believe that. No. no. That's, they aren't no. ready. Guys, let's be honest. It's a Skyrim expansion. So that does it for our first round of premonitions. We now move on to round two, which I will start us off on. Gentlemen, I've heard a lot of things about Xbox, you know, dropping out of the console market. And I think, quite frankly, that's optimism. Let me tell you how this goes for Microsoft by 2027. The user experience of installing such huge games off of Blu-ray drives makes physical as an, physical games as an engagement, as an experience so terrible that Microsoft has a, quote, brilliant idea. Every game on the Xbox of 2027 comes on insanely high-end SD cards, and the cost of physical games goes up to $100. Microsoft murders the physical market and goes fully digital. Well, that's just bravery. (laughs) (laughs) You're, correct. You're, you're leaving out the part where di- they also increase digital games to that amount to appease retailers and then just everything dies. Uh, that happens in 2030. <laughs> <laughs> I like how every premonition is just like, oh yeah, in a few years after that, we aren't going to talk about it. In 2030, not, not these <laughs> yeah, premonitions. No, that's, that's, that's just barely out my purview. <laughs> just, just outside of it ever so slightly. <laughs> Please get used to that gag tonight, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> the only one we got <laughs> look somebody's clouding the force i don't know what to tell you uh kz i'm gonna need you to follow that up with something tell me something about the 2020s for gamers well here's one for nintendo for one of their titles in the 2020s they will finally uh rip off the band-aid in a way and release a new mario kart with new branding in which they'll call it mario kart all-stars and will use stuff from all of their IPs, from from tracks to vehicles, new mechanics, and it'll be their equivalent of a Super Smash Brothers esque cart, and will somehow go on to be their best selling title of the entire decade. Oh, that was nice. Yeah. So, so the main premonition here is that the DLC trends from the most recent one will continue, and they'll just rebrand to fit that. Uh, yeah. The the general focus is. You know, you have the Mario Kart in name because that's one of the most well-known like series. Mm -hmm. But in terms of like some mechanics, the tracks and everything, it isn't just a bunch of Mario tracks. And then a couple here, you'll have a bunch of F-Zero, Star Fox, Splatoon, even some like random ones. The way we have like Excite Bike, they'd add like lesser known stuff. And the roster will actually be good because it'll be a nice variety from all of their all of their big series. But will it have pink gold peach? (laughs) The important questions. The final boss is pink gold peach. (laughs) Yes. I, I, this was, this was my first, this was my first one, by the way, but since you were right next to me and you dropped your hellish racing one, I had to move it. (laughs) That's fair. This is an incredible meta game of trying to figure out when to pull out the really bad ones or like, should I save them? Mm -hmm. Uh, KZ, I, I have a question. About, about okay. this game. Yeah. Will it feature Crunch the Kremlin, Drumstick the Rooster, or Pipsy the Mouse? There is some talk with uh, <laughs> with Microsoft. Uh-huh. There's some back and forth. Yeah. And they are able to naturally have Donkey Kong characters in there, but we get tipped up. Nice. That's what we I get want. tipped up. That's important. Hey, it's tip top. Tip top. Mr. Feel. (laughs) Yes. I I need your premonition for round two. Tell me about the 2020s. Well, this is the most horrible one. So after this one, you're safe coming from me. This is the most caustic one I'm bringing. 
Okay. Most gaming news websites will be gone by 2030 as online ad revenue gets even more dire and alternative funding methods fail to pan out. As everything sinks, a gaming site, possibly Polygon, most likely Polygon, will attempt to rebrand into a college humor-esque personality <gasps> video site. No! And it Haven't they already done so that? so nightmarishly <laughs> bad that every single person involved will just delete all their social media <laughs> and <finish. laughs> And you found the one I want to come true the most. Self-cleaning. Oh. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> so it will awful. last three months. The <laughs> last thing they put up will be a video involving multiple people singing, and then you will never hear about any of those people ever again. God, you've thought about this one a lot. Somewhere over the rainbow. Knock, knock, knocking on game no, 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 door. No, 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 Dan, it'd be somewhere there's a gatekeeping dude, bro. <laughs> somewhere. Uh, that's that's fair. That's fair. Uh, hey, Bob. Poison hey, going up? into our ears. I'm going to I'm going to need a premonition from you to escape this premonition. OK, mine's really optimistic. <laughs> oh, that's good. That's good. U.S. game devs will unionize. <gasps> this is great. Mm. But we're, we're just... delaying every single game that year because of it. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm okay with that. I'm, yeah. Good. I'm going to clap. I'm going to clap. <laughs> It'll be the only time in history The Witcher 3 was not on sale. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're not in America, so it doesn't work. Yeah, that doesn't, I'm sorry. I can't guarantee that. I'm just talking about America, unfortunately. Solidarity. <laughs> Whip crack. Rockstar and CD Projekt Red will continue to be ground under the millstone. Don't worry if if Wales or wherever Rock or CD Projekt Red is ever unionize like force it in that country, they'll move countries. That's what that's what they will do. Uh, Bob, here's what they'll do: <laughs> if uh, if they unionize, since there would be fewer countries remaining to move to, they will make a floating castle. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Like I unironically believe that is what EA would do. <laughs> Motherfucking Zanzibar. Yes. <laughs> Fucking Zanzibar. We are diamond devs. <laughs> Don't you see this is a home for us game devs? <laughs> <laughs> Just skyhooking pixel artists and coders and they wake up on the island. <laughs> I'm going to have to edit this out they, so they, we they can have make it. change their name. <laughs> See, it's the reverse of Alita. They try to run down the cables and they get wrecked on the way down. <laughs> you can't escape the game dev castle. <laughs> anyway, uh, Dr. Agro, hmm. I'm going to need your next premonition. What can you tell me about the 2020s? Okay, well, uh, I have read the tea leaves, so here's the tea, sis. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> a national government uh, who will at this time remain nameless will construct and run a social media-based deep meta ARG oh. with the goal of surreptitiously inducing citizens of a foreign state to access and distribute sensitive governmental, military, or financial data in an effort to destabilize Western hegemony. There will be no arrests, and it will have a minimum score of 80 on Metacritic. <laughs> <laughs> Raw! <laughs> Where am I? <laughs> You're in the big think dimension, KZ, for real this time. <laughs> oh, you got me really worried. I'm like, no, no, not this. Oh, no. <laughs> well, the first two rounds are over. That means we're moving on to our lightning round. In this lightning round, each contestant must answer a question, and we're going to go through them quickly. The first question is, name a franchise that will be reborn in the 2020s. We'll start with mm. Dr. Agro. It's been 24 years. It's time. Vector Man. Nice. Uh, He's totally real. At a moment like this, I wish we had video so people could see the expression I had. Uh, Bob, I'm going to need yours. I'm going to shoot from the hip on this one. Uh, Onimusha. Oh. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I guess, I guess it's 2020, so. <laughs> <laughs> if it ships this year, that counts. <laughs> yes. Mr. Feel? Well, 
I am going to say Wild Arms because JRPGs are coming back and Sony is going to look in their box and go, oh shit, we own that. Uh, and KZ Excellent? Uh, Ape Escape. Bold. <laughs> <laughs> The sound you hear in the background is Dan driving his car to KZ's house to shoot him. <laughs> no, that's, that's that's fine. That's look, it was on the floor. I let you Sorry, can that, pick it that's up. The, that's the one time I'm playing for points. It's, oh no, it's a high you, probability. You hit. think you think you robbed my take? No, uh, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. That is coming back. Oh yeah, that was mm. that was also the one I was thinking of. But I'm like, you know what? Dan might be more mad if I no, take I wouldn't that. take something so obvious. I'd take even money on that. Uh, we are moving on to the next question, though. A franchise that will finally die and be buried. Or as the AVGM would say, buried. <laughs> We're going to start with Bob this time. Bob, name a franchise that will die and be buried in the 2020s. Oh, man. This is, this is harder. Remember, Bob, it's the lightning round. Right? Uh, dishonored. <laughs> Dishonored with its two games. <laughs> yeah, I just like want a franchise. To your brain. Is it a press release? Do they go, <laughs> Count guys? Already halfway down into the mud. <laughs> low hanging fruit. Yeah. Get your low hanging fruit. What was I supposed to say, Mario? <laughs> I don't fucking. Anyway, uh, <laughs> Dr. Agro. Assassin's Creed. Oh. Put that shit Fuck. in the ground. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, we're gonna go to Mr. Feel. Fuck! <laughs> <laughs> he, that was his giant gun, and you just ripped it from him. We are of one soul, dear heart. World of Warcraft will finally die in the 2020s. Well, yeah, they have the new RPG Titan. Funny to you, for you to predict a, a lich dying. <laughs> it, I'd give it even money. <laughs> Someone will find its phylactery and smash it. <laughs> Many have gone in search. <laughs> All have perished. It's true. Go oh, man, I should have used Halo. God, I'm an idiot. Yeah. I... <laughs> that's, that's what I was going to do if nobody said it. <laughs> or if somebody said mine. Well, yeah, Bob, there's no, there's nowhere for it to go after the 17 Halo games that you predicted they're making. Okay, yeah, I, no, that would be my turn. turn so I'm going to need Halo. everyone to pretend the last two minutes of conversation didn't happen. Okay, so mine's Halo. <laughs> <laughs> no! So that literally was mine. Bob's like, hey, this. It's not even my turn. Fuck this. But <laughs> Dan, I've seen, I've seen the trailers. Halo is is going to become infinite. Oh yeah, they can't end it after that. Uh, they can, hey. uh, because no one's going. To, it, we are going to sell fewer than a million copies on the Halo that comes out in 2026. <laughs> but it's okay. It's on Game oh. Pass. It doesn't need to sell any copies. Bob, that will You're be right. sales across Correct. every platform, and Game Pass will be shut down by 2025. Fun oh, no. fact. Oh no. Hey, Halo Infinite is set to succeed. Okay. What's, what's the last game you can think of with Infinite in its title? That did Bioshock good. Bioshock Infinite. Oh, I was thinking of Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. Yeah, I thought of both, and I was like, at least Bioshock's old? Has any game with Infinite in the title ever been good? I mean, Bioshock Infinite sold well. It was critically acclaimed. Yeah. I think. Pretty sure. They, they seem to have changed their mind on that, but sure. <laughs> You're not wrong. That doesn't matter. They sold this... It, it's set in stone. The Metacritic number exists. Yeah, yeah. The Metacritic <laughs> number exists no matter That's how many matters. articles came out a year or two later where they're like, so about my review. <laughs> yeah, no matter. Even though the dude who made Night in the Woods got on stage at GDC and said, Bioshock Infinite is stupid, racist bullshit, and only fucking idiots like it, and all the same people who reviewed it highly cheered. Uh... Yeah, that's how, that's how people work. Um, hey, KZ, I'm going to need your light, lightning round answer. Uh, what franchise is going to die and be buried in the 2020s? Uh, the Batman Arkham games. I, I feel like they're already dead. Maybe. I, how many years has it been? They're teasing one right now. Yeah, yeah but they've been teasing it for like six months and... I don't even know okay, if it's that fine, game anymore. Fine, I'll do my original answer, which is any game using Arkham style combat. <laughs> that that trend will die. Now, no. people will realize it sucks. Now, Casey, here's the problem with that. Okay, 
We said mm. uh, franchise, not institution. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, but this institution must burn down. I thought Dan was going to say the problem with that is that it's being replaced by Dark Souls, which isn't better. I may be of that opinion. I'm not willing to say. It could go either You're way. You're not willing to open that box? No. There are 13 locks on it, and I'm not undoing any one of them. With the lightning round over, we now move on to round three of our premonitions. KZ, you're heading us off on this round. Tell me something, anything, <laughs> about the 2020s for gamers. All right. So, we've been on this train of Capcom is back. They've been putting out great games. Monster Hunter World, DMC5, remakes of Resident Evil games. A lot of good stuff coming out. But that fighting game division been a been a big question mark. And we're expecting an eventual fighting game to come out. But it never does. <laughs> it never, and, and then we're like, what's going on? By the end of the decade, we will find out they spent three straight years making a Street Fighter 6 that was so bad, they canceled it and never talked about it again. Wow. Good. Fucking <laughs> applaud to intelligence. And, and, <laughs> and after an attempt to try and renegotiate a good license with Marvel, and that fell through, they just stopped making fighting games and instead used that team to make more good games <laughs> that are not I fighting game related. What? 100% fine with that future. But people will keep saying they're working on something, but they, it will never happen. <laughs> this, is, this is maybe really bold, because Casey just predicted <laughs> that, that Street Fighter dies. <laughs> yeah, well, only for this decade, Dan. It'll be oh, back okay. next that's, decade. That's fair. It's only 10 years yeah. without a Street Fighter. That's all. That's Ultra never happened before, Street right? Fighter 5. And as a result, people will view Street Fighter V the way they do Third Strike now. Uh. That literally, <laughs> that disgust was the feeling I had. Disgust. I would totally watch a documentary called Ten Years Without a Street Fighter. Yeah, I'd probably watch that too. It's just Daigo being sad. <laughs> These were the dark times. It's just Daigo being de making that exact. I was going to say being depressed, but his facial expression never changes. <laughs> so it's just him sitting there. You just got to light him properly. That's true. Uh, Mr. Feel, we're taking our next premonition from you. What can you tell me about the 2020s? Square Enix will finish the Final Fantasy VII remake. Uh, they will look at their finances and be like, wow, uh, making separate Final Fantasy remakes on top of our normal Final Fantasy games makes a lot of money, so we're just going to remake Final Fantasy VIII now. Uh, any premonitions for how that goes for them? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure just as many people will be excited, right, everybody? Less, less well than Final Fantasy VII, but still well enough for them to maybe do nine. Okay. It will su be surprisingly scaled back in only one game this time because eight isn't as popular. Uh, Bob? Yeah? I'm going to need the next premonition from you. Tell me about the 2020s. All right. I got another Square Enix one because we're on a roll, I oh, guess. Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Kingdom Hearts by Platinum Games happens. It has lightning in it. Ah! <laughs> I am so I'm, I'm going to be real with you. Nothing, nothing you guys bring to a armchair devs Kingdom Hearts will be worse than what you just fucking said to me. Oh Can no, you this, you yeah. this is good. In the Kingdom and Hearts not, style. And not the lightning part, with the platinum games part. Oh no, this is good. This is, this is, this this is, is some good stuff. Uh, what's up, Agro? Can you imagine, in, in the Kingdom Hearts art style, with how big their shoes are, how big lightning's feet would be in that game? <laughs> oh no, that's only Sora and... Kyrie, I think. I think everybody else has normal feet. <laughs> Are you saying that she will be tainted by the Sora and be like a half Sora, half lightning compilation? Oh, no, she's definitely going to be a Sora. <laughs> okay, you're getting me interested in this whole story direction where Final Fantasy characters have straight up links entirely to other characters. It's just like that bad season of Digimon. <laughs> Which one? <laughs> oh, see, the, the, the real problem here is when Platinum takes over, they're going to do a voice actor shakeup, 
And now instead of voicing Lee, uh, Quentin Flynn's going to voice Riku. And Riku <laughs> is like right in from revenge <laughs> in this. <laughs> well, shit, now I want to play it. And he's doing the edgy voice. Yes. Sora, now it's my turn to protect you. <laughs> I was the Riku in that rain. <laughs> <laughs> do do they switch? Do they just switch VAs? So then you got David Gallagher going. David Gallagher going. Got it memorized. Got uh. it memorized. <laughs> Burn, baby. Look, Axel won't even uh. have to be in it. He already did his thing. <laughs> He's done. <laughs> Axel dies He's at like, the beginning of Tragic Hero. Yes. <laughs> it's a really hard. Found dead in Miami. It's a heartbreaking moment. Oh, I get it. Heartbreaking. Yep. We're going to move on to Dr. How are we going to get out of this? We're going to move on to Dr. Agro for the next premonition. Dr. Agro, what can you tell me about the 2020s for gamers? Okay. The stars are aligned, mm -hmm. but their alignment is chaotic neutral, so who even knows? Oh, no. The first big news story about a person dying while wearing a commercial VR headset will be a 17-year-old who will be found when their self-driving car arrives at their destination, ferrying only a corpse. Old media will have conniptions trying to decide which new and frightening post-microwave technology was to blame, and panicked legislation will make operating or owning VR or AR equipment restricted to people over the age of 21. Wow, this seems incredibly likely. I, I think that's a reasonable take on this, uh... You know, with the 3DS being bad for children with its 3D vision, I feel like this absolutely follows up on that in a strong way culturally. How do you remember this? It's, uh, you never forget deep scars. I uh, thank you for a vision of the future. This is chillingly real. It, you presented this vision of the future in 8K resolution. <laughs> oh man, 8K, that's the future. But on, only 30 frames per second. Because my third eye cannot perceive anything above that. <laughs> Edgar, you might need to do that. will exist in 2030. <laughs> Gentlemen, Ugh. I am excited to tell you about the 2020 for gamers. Ooh. Gentlemen, the first Game Fuel sponsored by PlayStation themselves will come out and will be the best tasting flavor of Game Fuel. However,. It will be pulled off the shelves in short order because somehow it causes urinary tract infections. <laughs> the human body wasn't built for that much blue. In, in other news, you're going to the hospital. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes to both of these. <laughs> I'm going to die. How many influencers are going to die? Uh, me? So at Not least enough. one. Uh, we're, we're in a call with one of them. <laughs> I'm going to be in the hospital in my PlayStation muscle suit. <laughs> it's keeping your heart going. Blue all over my lips. I need a new <laughs> vessel for my urine. <laughs> Catherine, <laughs> Kingdom Heart. <laughs> And we have reached our final round of premonitions for the 2020. <sighs> and let's take a breath. I am ready. Mr. Feel, tell me, what is your final premonition for the 2020s for gamers? Loot boxes and everything loot box shaped will be outlawed in the Europe and the United States. All gotcha games will shut down their English versions and do the Grand Blue Fantasy thing where they're only available in Japan, yet have full English text. Meanwhile, Western mobile companies and developers will just fucking sink into the ocean. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds about right. A bright message of hope. <laughs> yeah. Inside this loot box is hope. <laughs> Bob, please tell me, what is your final gamer premonition for the 2020s? <sighs> okay, I'm, I'm running low here. Let's see. Xbox <laughs> will allow you to buy Xbox Live on any platform. <clears throat> They'll see, make their own platforms. Okay. But they want you to buy Xbox Live. So to play a Microsoft game online on other platforms... You have to pay for Xbox Live Gold. Yes. 
That's what you're telling me. That's what I'm telling you. They'll sell you Gears of War on your PlayStation, but you gotta buy Xbox Live. You know... That doesn't even sound that ridiculous <laughs> compared to current strategy. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and say possible. it's amazing they found a way to make putting their stuff on other platforms still make no money. <laughs> right? How many of us brought question. Microsoft quits to the party? <laughs> yeah. Surprisingly, I I didn't do that. I instead went Stadium buys Bamco. <laughs> Uh, I, I didn't do that. I just uh, I just pointed out that Microsoft would pour bleach in the pool after using chlorine. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, Bob! I have a question about yours. Sure, you've had a interesting history of some of your premonitions, uh -huh. and like the PlayStation one, in which you said the PS5 will go back to the browser shop right. when they add Xbox Live to all these other platforms. Will it have the same UI and functionality as games for Windows Live? <sighs> they won't be dredging up <sighs> that corpse. That's a step too far. Uh, they will let you program <laughs> the, for your PC game that you have to Xbox Live. They'll let you program in a way that just gets totally defunct and uh, ruins it. Just like Windows Live, though. Okay, good. Yeah, you don't good. worry. We need don't to worry. Keep... We can get that again. We can get a whole new set of PC games that don't run in five years. Hey, I'll... <laughs> It will have been years and years since then. I'll be nostalgic for it. Everyone will forget, right? Yeah. Yeah, the the good old days. After 9-11. <laughs> I think my heart just stopped. Uh, Dr. Agro, mm. I know your heart just stopped, but I'm going to need your final gamer premonition for the 2020s. All right. In my last few moments, oh, before no. I slip to the other side, <laughs> I shall reveal as my soul binds with infinity. <laughs> <laughs> Games built from the ground up for streaming will feature robust, see intrusive, audience participation features and unique interactive mechanics. The first game to equate current verifiable viewer totals to in-game power levels will spark a paradigm shift in the economics of streaming, in which the most financially powerful streamers can afford to boost their in-game performance by paying people to watch them, thus creating an unchecked feedback loop, completing the Ouroboros and ushering in the final collapse of Western feral capitalism, not with a bang, but with a ninja. Raw. Ugh. I need pills. I like the part about about capitalism collapsing. That part's good. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you think you're being a little too revolutionary? No, never. Not even. I'm not even close to being too much. <laughs> Where it's premonition about your guillotine. <laughs> My premonitions aren't political at all. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, keep your politics out of this. Oh, wait. Bag. Also, I just died, so no one look for me. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> this is... This will be... I can no longer testify against Hillary Clinton. This will be my final premonition for Gamer Premonitions 2020s. <laughs> Seeing how shipping games on cartridge for the Switch is very, very expensive, Nintendo, in the future for the Switch 2, will invent an optical-based format from which you will install the games on your Switch. It will be way too similar to the UMD. Yes! <laughs> can you bend the Switch 2 and launch it? <laughs> you can, but the screen is so gone by the time you get done doing that. It's so easy, though! <laughs> it's so easy, just watch! <laughs> this is clearly how they wanted me to use it. <laughs> we got Nintendo UMD Drift. <laughs> <laughs> People are suing over injuries caused by <laughs> ejecting the disc out of the Switch. Watch, it's this easy. <laughs> uh, I broke my Switch in half and then stabbed my cousin with it. This is clearly a manufacturing error. Child, that thing was made of magnesium alloy. How are you this strong? <laughs> I can't I have use a body suit. <laughs> I used my dad's miter saw. It has a diamond blade. <laughs> But the switch is the really dangerous thing, let me tell you. <laughs> That's it. No switches for anybody under 21. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Nintendo slash Animal Crossing's number one demographic, people with too much time. Casey, I'm going to 
have to ask you for your final premonition, which will be our final premonition for the 2020s. What can you tell me? Uh, all right, I have my Square Enix premonition for what they're looking like. By the end of the decade, due to incredible incompetence from Square Enix management, on top of poor performing games and everything around it, the all of the Western studios and Western branch of Square Enix will crumble into pieces to the point where the only thing that they do is make Japanese games because all of the games flop, come out bad. It's a complete nightmare. On top of that, the Japanese branch, finally having gotten their shit together, puts out all three parts of that Final Fantasy VII remake, somehow puts together two mainline Final Fantasy games, Dragon Quest slowly becomes a more mainish stream thing in the West, and for better or for worse, somehow they put out nine Kingdom Hearts titles. I don't know how it happened. And no, they're not all big main Kingdom Hearts games, and that's going to be the problem. They go back to what they did before. There are four or five different platforms you have to play these on. One of them will be on Stadia. Oh, well, I mean, obviously, obviously, uh, Platinum's going to help them get out that many Kingdom Hearts games. A Platinum Kingdom Hearts game exclusive to Stadia will 100% happen and it'll be a remake of Recoded. Oh good, I don't have to fucking care. I look forward to the <laughs> Tokyo RPG Factory Kingdom Hearts. Don't worry, the Recoded remake has brand new information. You'll need to play it. No, even Recoded <laughs> didn't have information oh. you needed. But I'm still making Dan play it anyway. Well, everyone... These were some pretty strong premonitions. I would like to thank you all for coming on and sharing our vision of the future with our audience. Thank you for listening to this episode of Gamer Premonitions. This show, like our other podcasts, is only possible with the generous time our co-hosts have given to us and the equipment we've bought to make it higher quality and easier to produce. Please consider supporting our podcast series on our Gigaboots Podcast Patreon and look forward to more Gamer Premonitions and Big Think to Mention in the future. This video was brought to you by the power of the legendary Gigaboots executive producers, Vincent Pover, Nicholas Cameron, E. Lee Broyles, Star Falcon, Spaceman Spiff, Danny Richardson, Dryzark, RedBlaze27, and Texas Man Join Smash. Thank you for lending us your power, our executive producers. And also these guys. If you want to become powerful like our executive producers, then head on over to www.patreon.com slash gigaboots today.